I want to start by thanking um, Preservation Texas and National Park Service, especially Guadalupe Mountains, uh, National Parks Conservation uh, Association, and of course NCPTT for organizing this and for all the other sponsors. I hope you don't think of this as the Texas Cultural Landscape Symposium, but that you think of it as the first Texas Cultural Landscape Symposium with others to follow two years, three years, next year, whatever. Um, I was incredibly impressed by the depth of what everyone spoke about the last couple of days, the awareness of what's going on here in Texas. As I said in my opening remarks, which seems like about a week ago, it was just yesterday morning, um, that I hope to learn a lot, and boy, did I learn a lot. I hope everyone else did as well. Um, it was just fascinating to me to hear what everyone spoke about and to the great variety varieties of groups and of resources here in Texas. I was especially excited to see the, uh, or to hear about, see, hear about the diverse places, diverse resources, and diverse people that are evident in the kind of overall kind of mega cultural landscapes here in Texas. That was incredibly impressive and to understand not only what's here, but also that you understand and you see the challenges that are being faced. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I think that, you know, we spoke about the history, we spoke about, uh, you spoke about history, opportunities and challenges of doing that. Uh, I was, I, I really enjoyed understanding some of the practicalities and learning about the tools and the technologies, um, learning about the philosophy of, of cultural landscapes and cultural landscape preservation and kind of dealing with that. I'm just kind of trying to maybe play back for you some of the things that we did. Um, it was important, I think, also uh, from you know my colleagues in the National Park Service and and others to really learn about rules and legislation because in many ways you need to know that in order to get things done, and I think that's very very important. Um, I first got involved in this. I don't know what was it, Julie, a week ago maybe? No, it was longer ago than that. When when Julie and Evan approached me and asked me if I would be involved. As you heard, we're about to start a cultural landscape report for Bassett Farms that you're all gonna to see tomorrow. And I think associated with that, Evan and Julie and others asked if I would be involved in this. And I, I don't even think Julie got to finish or Evan got to finish his sentence before I said yes. I think that's probably true. So um, it's really been a delight, delight for me. Um, Texas is, is remarkably ri ri rich in cultural landscapes. I think that Greg's discussion about the register and the variety of cultural landscapes among what everybody else showed was, was very, very important and really, really interesting. Um, so the question that it leaves with, I think, you know, there's always um, a wonderful enthusiasm that comes out of meetings like this for you is everyone, and for me, as we go back to our local communities and think about what to do. But then there's always the question of what to do, okay? So I think, you know, I think if I could just summarize that briefly, I don't wanna keep you too long. I think one of the things that we heard a lot today was about education, and yesterday and today, about educating other people about the places that they see every day, that they live in, that they pass through. And I, I, would, I would hope that you would each take it upon it as your responsibility to do that, whether it's over dinner, over a beer, over, somehow it's food all the time, over beer, food, coffee, whatever, or just meeting people and saying, you know, have you been to this place? Do you know that that's when those trees are planted? That, that, that this road that looks like it's just kind of a 16 foot wide road was once the road from Florida to California. You know, just re getting people to understand that. As I said earlier <coughs> yesterday, my view about cultural landscapes is that they help us understand where we are in time and space. What came before us, what came, what's gonna, what, where we are now and where we're going, and then also just about geographically, ecologically where we are. Obviously, cultural landscapes, as you know, as you've heard again and again and again, are not just about culture, they're also about nature and understanding those. In, in, 
in design studies and in ecological studies, this is a simplest view, simplistic view of it, there is a concept known as the ecotone. And the ecotone is where you take two e environments and the organisms that live in one and live in the other can, can both live where those environments overlap. Okay, to me, where I live on the Pacific Coast in in, in Oregon, that's that's really where you get crabs and and you get all kind of vegetation that needs to have the water, but also needs to have the sunlight. Okay, so it's not just a wet wetland environment or a dryland environment. They thrive in both of those because of the wave action and the kind of tidal uh, systems that there are. So that's that I think is important. As you deal with education, it's, get, it's important to have people recognize what's important. You know, go to your city councils, go to your local county, county groups and, and talk about how can we recognize this because this is where the history of our place happened. Owning that cultural landscape for each of us, owning that cultural landscape where we live becomes a way to recognize it and to educate other people about it. It's, it's one of the ways that it happens. And, it, and if you look at how historic buildings, historic structures, courthouses, homesteads first got recognized, that's what happened. People said, wait a minute, that was important. My great, great, great grandparents lived there. That's an important place. Or I know the people whose great, great grandparents lived there. It's an important place. The other piece I think that's important, or two other pieces really, is what I said is, is to get ordinances, get laws, get recognition in whatever way is appropriate for your community. I tend to shy away from always saying laws or ordinances because sometimes it's just, that's not appropriate for every community. Just, you know, frankly, politically or socially in your community that may not work, but there are ways to do that to get a local planning agency to kind of recognize that this too is also important. But also then to, to manage change, to recognize that when a cultural landscape changes, you don't necessarily lose everything about it. And therefore having that record, that documentation of what's there is very, very important. I think by now you all get that doing cultural landscape work is not easy. It's very hard, it's hard work, because often you look at it and you, you don't understand it. Let me give you my email address. There's a great article from the 1970s that I, I have a PDF of that I will send anybody who asks me. The easiest, I have you know, seven email addresses like most people. Um, the easiest one are my initials R, Z like in zebra, M920 at gmail.com. And RZM920 at gmail.com. I will send you, if you just send me a note saying we met here and please send it. There's a great article written in the late 1970s by a British author named Marion Shord. And I know that some of you know this, Susan, you know this article, a chapter in a book. And it was basically why landscapes are harder to protect than buildings. And although it's filled with British examples, which are okay, British examples, we go back many years, as you know. Um, what's most important about is Marion's view that people don't always see and understand what they're looking at. And it's a very, very good article. I will send you a PDF of that if you just write to me. I'm gonna be away for about 10 days now on vacation, but after I get back, I will gladly send that to you. Um, so I wanna close with, first of all, you're gonna hear about tomorrow's uh, field trip. And I would encourage you tomorrow to come and look and take pictures. And yes, listen to what some of us may say to you, but more importantly, look at what you see. I, I recently hired a, a new assistant in our cultural landscape research group, and we were doing some work at Pearl Harbor with a senior person in the Park Service um, it, out of San Francisco, and I was there with many years experience, and this much younger, much less experienced person was seeing things in that landscape that neither of the rest of us saw. 
And it really not only impressed me about her, but impressed me about always having new eyes, new ways of looking at things, that that's really important. So my final comment before I turn it over to Evan is that you'll often hear people say to you, I don't, I don't do preservation. I don't believe in preservation. Sorry, that's just not what I'm about. Okay? My answer to that, and I bet if I did it here, is for you to think, how many of you have photographs of great-great-grandparents you've never met and were never alive when you were? How many of you have records of deeds from your house or your parents' house? How many of you have ticket stubs from concerts you went to when you were 16 years old? I'm thinking about the things that I have here, okay? How many of you have phone numbers before there were area codes, if you're old enough, right? Okay, and my point there is that all of those people, in fact, practice preservation. They practice it for themselves. And our goal is to practice it as a community and as a society. But it's, in fact, the same thing. I've done, I, I actually did that once at a meeting in Astoria, Oregon. And when I got up and I was talking about this, and someone started literally screaming at me, why are you wasting our time with preservation, da, da, da. And I went, wait, wait a minute. You, you know, and I said that to this person, and he said, oh, Okay, I get it, you know, and I think that's my point, that in fact, we all have a great need to understand, I'm going to come back to this again, where we are in time and space, and preservation of cultural landscapes helps us do that when in fact we do it at a more local level, very personal level anyway. So thank you very much for the, I had a number of great conversations today, um, this week. I'm looking forward to more of them tomorrow with, with any of you and all of you. And I really do appreciate the opportunity to be here and to listen and to learn from you. And I will be back, because we're working at Bassett Farms. I don't, probably a lot, I'll be back a lot. <laughs> anyway, thank you all very, very much.